Welcome back to the most professional StarCraft 2, the only term used to introduce the rank one player, arguably the greatest of all time, the Red Zerg in the bottom right. The finisher. It is Serral. Now, any challenger is going to have quite a hill to climb. But one of the few players who's climbed that mountain before and come out victorious on the other side. One of the few players to ever challenge Serral himself. The Frenchman from Team Liquid. The kid. It's Clem. A best of five Terran versus Zerg from the ESL Summer European Semi-Finals. This match I am looking heavily forward to. And not just because Clem versus Serral, but because so many people, essentially as it was being played, uh, requested and recommended that I check it out. And I mean, obviously, I was going to anyways. But if so many people liked it, well, there's no reason for me not to ask them to like it again. If we get 1,000, and uh, Jimmy, what are we at? 1,030 likes on this video. I'm going to cast another series of StarCraft 2, probably tomorrow. Okay, and I'll probably do it anyways, because I don't know what else I'd do with my life. But, uh, and, and also... This may very well be just, we'll just retire after this series. But either way, thank you guys for tuning in. I've been really enjoying commentating lately. There have been some great games, but apparently this goes be above and beyond. So I don't want to set your expectations too high. I want to go even higher. Doesn't make sense, but it doesn't need to, because what does make sense is Serral's builds. Serral is the standard. He's almost, for many people, boring to watch because he's just so good at everything. Okay, there's no weakness. There's no... Uh, the, I guess the only weakness is, is Zerg's and his own mentality, uh, as we saw in Ayum Katowice. But essentially, what Serral does is the meta. Uh, and if he decides to change it, well, it's changing. It's not like Doc, who circumvents it. He subverts it. He works to corrupt it from the inside. No. Serral is the deep zerg state. Serral is is how we play StarCraft 2. <clears throat> and apparently how we play StarCraft 2 is a quick roach timing as he's opting for a lair, a roach warren, and two more gases here at the natural. Clem, on the other hand, is going for a hellbat time off of two base. So... Uh, it could not be stacking up much worse for him. Unless Serral gets particularly greedy. But having a lair done at four and a half minutes is inordinately quick. As usually that's something you might not even start until after five. So, the lair itself, not even just the roach speed or anything like that. Roaches have kind of come back into the forefront as an option. Uh, for shutting down a lot of, uh, lower economy and, and lower unit count early timings out of Terran, as they're just a bit more reliable and larva efficient. Those larva, you gotta, it, it's, it's, I know it's boring. All right, but larva management. Okay, that's one of the most important things of early game Zerg, but is there enough larva to deal with this? Here comes the Hellbat timing. <clears throat> well, the Marines are leading the charge. The Hellbats are just the backstop for now. The Marines stutter stepping through. Serral just doesn't seem to have anything here. Sure, he had the roaches and he has speed on the way. The marines are stimming their way through half their HP, but they're cutting down all of the queens. And so far, he's just been tearing through the entire base. The hellbats body blocking out as he slaughters the entire drone line. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, proving my ability to count and Clem's ability to get damage done against the finisher. 15 drone kills, and he gets out with a full mat of Aka marines, everything else. He was just cutting the wheat from the chaff there. Uh, Hellion still finding a little bit of damage, but Serral, <laughs> blindsided. It's a game of seconds. And Clem gets in seconds before enough roaches to stop him. Yeah, I think if Clem shows up 15 seconds later, Serral has all his queens in possession, he has the roaches together, and even now, Serral, I, he had all the roaches to deal with it. It's just Clem, they weren't all in the right place. And, uh, that is more than half the battle. Clem did delay a lot 
in order to execute this. We see the rare overlord and then he stops creeping. I don't but what caused you to stop? He was dropping overlord creep at the third and then decides again. That's an interesting like why would you stop though? It made him uncomfortable, I guess. I don't know. Huh. Performance anxiety. It happens to the best of us. <clears throat> a fake meta Oh my god, it's happening. So, this is something we saw Bunny using in the GSL not long ago. If you watch that video, you can probably find my clickbait video about it. But Bunny ended up sending out multiple fake metavag drops against Solar. They send uh, metavags with nothing in them. Oh, he's back to creeping. All right, he got a, a confidence boost. Short lived. Uh, and sending out, because you have to, like, you have to assume there's Marines, maybe even Widowmons or something in there. You have to assume that. And against Roach Ravager, anything you can do, one, there's no way they can stop the Medivac. Only Queen, the Queens are the only anti-air option. As well as the Roaches being pinned back. Giving you maybe a little more opportunity to move in with your army. And, well, here we go. Siege tank, Marines easily isolate and kill the base in the bottom left. Now remember Clem didn't have a third command center particularly early on here. So he doesn't have that that economy and production. Ooh, you do not want to be caught on the bridges of death. Clem actually gonna uh, post up for a bit of a parade. Uh, against 1-1 one, one Roach Ravager, you do need those siege tanks or a very good position for the Marines. As right now the upgrade advantage goes to Sarah. And this is an army that relies very much on upgrades. Well, both sides. Cyril coming through the bridges. He's able to isolate one of the tanks, take it down. A lot of damage being dealt. But at the same time, the Marines are cutting through the southern flank. He still has enough Marines. Well, enough medevacs in order to pick up all the Marines and all, essentially, their entire families. As he's lost almost everything else. Loads up into the most bruised medevac. Well, take a look. Who comes out on top of that fight? Eh, I think... Well, it, therefore I am. But also, Cyril holds on, and he whittles down the Marine count. And Clem doesn't really have the production right now. He's only now got his extra racks up to five on mine. Five barracks? Yeah, five barracks. About your, your maximum at two to three bases. So now that Cyril has, has beaten back the army, if he can keep the medevacs at home, the biggest danger is if the medevacs are able to move out on the map with impunity. The best defense in this case is a good offense, as keeping those units at home is in Clem's best interest right now, so Cyril can keep track of them. The Roaches and Ravagers working their way through. The boys have to be pulled. Corrosive Bow sprayed up into the air, dropped down on not too much, but the SCV count is dipping. Clem dropping a mule mid-fight. He still has 60 SCVs despite losing eight of them here. Cyril targeting some Marauders as well. During the fight, continue sending units across. He really needs to make sure the medevacs can't get out onto the map. At the same time, he can't afford to lose a critical mass of roaches. Another set of corrosive bows easily dodge, split and stem, but walks a little far forward. Those are slow zerglings that Cyril has here. But anything to get in the way, it's not like they're going to be doing any damage anyways. Just absorbing some of the valuable time on those marines and marauders. But Clem... He eventually grinds his way through all the roaches and all the zerglings. And now making his way across the constant battle across the map. Cyril is about to finish zergling speed. One good set of corrosive biles could really turn the tide here. But Clem, I don't think, is going to let that happen. Takes out the widow mine. I don't even know if the... Eh, he's adding a few widow mines in. Infestation pit. Roaches with burrow. And Burrow Move, very importantly, able to uh, undercut many of the efforts. The scan, bottom left, sees the drone count. It's not particularly high. Right now, from our perspective, we can see everything. It's in Clem's best interest to mostly sit back while keeping Cyril as busy as possible and max out with the best upgrades he can. Because his army is almost, uh, almost certainly going to be better than Cyril's at 200 supply. Roaches are all about, well, roaches are aptly named. They are annoying to get rid of. Their main strength is in overwhelming numbers and getting in places they shouldn't be. 
but overall it a heads up fight against a bunch of dudes with drugs and guns. Well, uh, the roaches are going to struggle. But tunneling claws is the the choice to start out in game one. Well, not really start out, but progress further. That's how Sarah's going to try to keep Clem busy here. We'll see how effective it is as Clem is approaching 200 supply. He's only got a couple tanks back at home. The turret is in position. I believe Clem had some suspicions. Ooh, Widowmine takes a chunk of Zerglings. Bro move roaches. We'll get a couple of the tanks, but the Metavags head all the way back. Looks like a Liberator taken out in the bottom left. Not in the main, though. Still holding and taking out any drones nearby. Honestly, Cyril is in a, a difficult position. Clem has held on strongly. He's applied pressure where he needed, and he's held back at home when required. So far, Cyril has been unable to break him. Now, it's Clem who has the army supply advantage. He doesn't have the upgrades at the moment. Oh, and a couple infestors could really do a lot in, in order to make things easier for the Zerg army to, to close the distance. Oh, a beautiful fungal sprays corrosive bow across the board, but splitting the blue sea is Clem. A beautiful spread. I can't believe it's not butter. And the corrosive miles are finding nothing but empty space. As the infestors are targeted down, the medevac count grows to dramatic proportions. He's got a dozen of them. And Clem is at 188 supply against Cyril's 151. And it's only going to get better. For the Frenchman here. I'm not sure where Cyril finds a victory at this stage. If the, the Burmu roaches weren't it, if the infestors couldn't turn the tide, well, at this point, it's going to be difficult to do anything at all. Clem, divide and conquer. Though a weird amount of medevacs on each side. Takes out one of the hatcheries and uh, gets away with it. That is just too many. At this point, just send out a couple and, and make Cyril chase. <laughs> so many medevacs. 13, a baker's dozen here. <sighs> and Clem is cooking. Viper's on the way. It, Clem is just scanning for bases. Do you really have that little economy? Yes. Yes, he does, Clem. The only mistake Clem could make now is laying off the aggression. He is in prime position to take this game. All he has to do is lock it down and knock it out. Cyril, of course, literally the most difficult player to finish off. So, Clem playing it somewhat careful, pragmatically. Widowmines will burrow, drilling claws is done. Widowmines connect. Dodges a corrosive bile with the mine, spreads behind the marauders. Beautifully done. Clem is, is not giving an inch. Or a centimeter here. Ultralis Cavern is on the way, which is optimistic. Parasitic Bomb quarantines the medevac immediately. And does... Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh! Cyril draws the Widow Mine into full medevacs. And just like that, Clem's own units turn against him. I knew that amount of medevacs. It was... It was uncomfortably high numbers. And Cyril, when his own units won't cut it, he borrows some of Clem's. Sure, it's not going to change the momentum entirely. But at the same time, what looked to be a near GG position for Cyril is a lot more in doubt at the moment. Unfortunately, a mine kills a Viper. But Clem is on about even supply. Beautiful parasitic bomb on a high HP medevac to maximize the uptime there. When, when the parasitic bomb, when the medevac dies, the parasitic bomb stays in the area it died, but it's much better on a, a unit that's moving with the rest. But Cyril has turned a, a outright losing position into still an uphill battle, but a workable position. He's got the Vipers. He still has uh, not a great, but an okay economy. The Widow Mines, uh, those medevacs are all badly bruised. He's lost how many medevacs in this game? Only four. But pretty much all the rest are in this fight. So it, it's still 78 workers to 66. 33 is about to finish. Cyril may have bought himself a few more minutes, but Clem is continuing production. 
He's got the MNL. Oh my god, the widow mines again! Oh my god! Cyril! Again! Drags the mines in! Widow mines a dangerous unit for everyone involved. And so far, Clem. Clem killed nine medevacs! He's killed in the last two and a half minutes, which we've been fighting. He killed nine of his own medevacs with widow mines. I, like, Clem almost has done more damage to Terran than Cyril has. So Widowmon's definitely a, a double-edged grenade, which sounded dumb, but, you know, I'm standing by it. <laughs> which is, you know, just a grenade, I think. <laughs> Clem still has the army, but Cyril keeps winning these battles. These are some... Th these are some of those, like, I'm winning, but also, ooh. oh no. Oh, Cyril with a fungal from the high ground, catches a huge group of units, parasitic bomb, wipes out two more medevacs, where once they were plenty, now an endangered species. Medevac count down to three, and without medevacs, this army isn't nearly as overwhelming. The medevacs that keep the units in the fight, Cyril's spellcaster control, he fights into the army, the concave, and he, he ends up getting ground to a halt. Clem wins game one, but you gotta put some real asterisks on that one, as Clem, his signature unit, at least for many of his championships, is the Widowmine. And, but without it, well, Cyril has, has used the Widowmine to great effect here against Clem. Uh, I, I'm not sure if Widow Mines were a net positive in that game at all, but that really sets the tone for this series. Clem with some really solid Terran, some great multitasking, and some it, it, ridiculously sharp, uncomfortably sharp timings. But Cyril is never dead until he types two Gs, so Clem's going to have to keep right on that bleeding edge to have a chance here. All right, Jimmy. No. Game two. We're headed to Gresvin. That was just game one. Okay. All right, I see you guys. I see why you recommended this. I'm still uh, mixed feelings on the Roach Ravager. Dark has shown us that Ravagers are the most reliable unit for dealing with a lot of the early um, entrenched units from Terran. Siege tanks, Liberators, Widow Mines. All those units do have to be in a static position in order to uh, just, you know, participate in the fight meaningfully. So having a few Ravagers mixed in, if you're able to control them, is never bad. And Cyril, clearly able. But... I think Cyril kind of got his legs swept out from under him with that early two base. And the key is the two base. If he had gone for a third command center, instead of directing everything into that Hellbat Marine timing, then Cyril easily, like, Cyril had enough roaches on the field if they were all together to stop it. But he had them kind of spread around in order to deal with what is usually just Hellions running around. And in the few seconds it took to consolidate his roaches, Clem had already sprinted into his natural and then into his main and slaughtered all the drones on the way, or at least many of them. So I was dodging the Reaper by, by sneaking the drone out uh, into the corner here. Zerg links back and forth. You stay next to the extractor to potentially uh, dodge in there. But, you know, the real takeaway for me is Clem's on point today. All right. Clem has... Uh, he's, he's succeeded most of the time. In fact, these regional championships, the European championships specifically, is where Clem has actually won more than Cyril. Don't quote me on that. I, I didn't check. Jimmy, Jimmy, fact check me. But this has been Clem's tournament where he's really shown his best games. Um, and Cyril and, and to an extent, Raynor, 
in the same vein. Though Raynor's been struggling as well lately. Uh, ha have not found as much success. So. He's got a lot to prove here. But Clem, I think, still the best Terran um, outside of Korea. Big Gabe always gives a run for the money, but Clem has, has just this level of my... There was a time when I only half joked that he was the new Beyond. Now he's the other Beyond, as Beyond has continued to uh, show why he's so historical. Cyril got a Zergling in the base. Water is wet. Okay. You already liked the video. Like, these are all just constants in the world. Scouting Reaper. Of course, Cyril somehow found a way into the main base. Despite a depot existing, the Zerglings get in. He just finds those timings. I want to talk about APM. Not actions, but attention per minute. There is a finite speed at which um, human beings can can look at something, interpret the information, and, and direct a response. And for these players, <clears throat> the best way to measure it is in screens per minute. That's essentially how much. If you go to sc2replaystats.com, you can see uh, what that means. But it's essentially how much you move from, like, say... Let's go to their camera here. Looking at one screen to looking at something that's more than 50% another screen. So these players have an average of over 60 screens per minute. That means they are able to, in less than one second, look at something, direct an action, or move on, and, and move on to the next thing within one second. That is kind of a prerequisite. It doesn't matter how much APM exactly, but the ability to, to move between these things uh, that quickly. We're going to go to the Clem Cam as well. And, and that is something that Cyril is so good at exploiting. Because he's usually just a, a Research. tiny bit, like maybe 10% faster at figuring out what he needs than anyone else. And I think that is the key contributor to his success. Is his ability to interpret that information and act on it just ever so slightly quicker than everyone else. And that's why he always gets a Zergling in the base. This all started with a, this was because we were just, we were still talking about the Zergling guys. In case you lost the plot on that one. So, now everyone, grab your emotional support, Zergling. Okay, and be like, I could totally be a pro, but I just, I just would rather watch Winter on YouTube than practice, because, you know, we want Cyril to win some things. In other lies, we tie ourselves. <clears throat> That's it. All right, so the early marine timing thrown back by queens, queens thrown back by reapers, and medevacs thrown back by queens. A lot of throwing here, but only in the metaphorical sense. Actually, literal in this case. Clem had the three CC lining up into your standard Rex tank push here. Looks like he's going for the Octo Rex already spiraling into three base production with two more barracks. And a second factory. Sarah has a fourth hatch. Do we have a macro hatch? Or a fifth base? I assume we're coming up soon. 1-1 one, one upgrades across the board, but way quicker for Clem. <laughs> Clem at, at uh, over a minute. Yeah, he's a minute quicker than Sarah. Mainling speed is done. Sarah takes the center base as a fifth here. And the Lings will collapse. He does delay the fifth base. Hydra was down on the way, not the least bit surprising. This is the most conventional sort of Zerg style. And it's what Cyril's so god dang good at. Last game, the Roaches were attempted. And yeah, that the start of the game really kind of dictated the pace. But Roaches just don't really have... They, they're not a particularly... Brenda, get out of the... Oh my god, how many times? You really gotta cut down on the creep tumors, okay? I don't... <clears throat> Banelings? Banelings? I die. It's, it's those moments where I'm not even starting to commentate because I just expect Clem to pick up the Marines and for that moment that happens every, like twice a minute to happen again. 
but then some every once in a while, like I was saying, there's a finite amount of attention. And Cyril just seems to have a little more of it. He, he's able to catch out a few of the Marines, defuse the Widow Mine. He's continuing to spread the creep. And so far, while Clem has been doing a, an uh, applaudable job of keeping it together, I, uh, I, I think Cyril is going to be very comfortable with the situation. He's got everything he wants for a full-on macro game now. Doesn't get any better than this. Especially not at this level. He's got five bases infestation pit on the way. 2-2 two, two started. And not too far off that of the Terran. Hydral is dead. So there's a lot of money in the bank right now, but no larva. So he's just not able to spend. Great target by, by Clem. But I repeat myself. Muscular augments done for the Hydras. There's actually no Hydras on the field right now. As he's getting the Lurker done. That seems to be the trajectory we're going in this match. The Lurkers make a lot of sense against the Marine Whittlemine composition as both those get easily outranged by Lurkers even before their range upgrade. Alright. Oh, oh Whittlemines dragged into some of the Zerglings. Trying to drag them into the Terran army more than anything else, but they're enough to zone out and that allows the Marines to do a lot of damage during the fight. So far, Clem has killed... Dozens of Zerglings for minimal losses over the last minute. It's the- Ah, uh, Ricky! Thankfully, we got a cameo appearance by Ricky, the accidental swarm host, which even literally the best player in the world will sometimes bring uh, to the forefront when trying to A-move, but actually accidentally having your larva selected. So, welcome, Ricky. Uh, not really a, a, an, an omen of good or bad, just of the fact that the game has gone this long and there's an infestation pit. So now, with the obligatory appearance of Ricky, we can enter the late game. Now the question is, what does Cyril do with him? He's gonna is he gonna pretend like it was intentional? Oh my god. Alright. Oh, Cyril, this is why he's the greatest of all time, okay? Not because of his macro, but because of his attention to detail. He accidentally built a swarm host, and now he's gonna pretend like it was on purpose. <laughs> uh, anyways, in a much more meaningful battle, uh, the Queen's getting overwhelmed by the Widow Mines. Liberators, honestly, that little bit of attention he spent on the Swarm Host may be costing him now. Lurker range is on the way. Clem is maxed out. And he's closing in with a vengeance. Banelings roll in. And the Marines are melting. The Queens hold it together. Clem trying to get damage done on every front. And failing to do so in any meaningful way. Are there any any Vipers on the field? No. But the Hydras are the end here. You don't really need Vipers as badly when you're just up against Marine Mine. And you have the Hydra Lurker. As you do have those built-in counters. Widow Mine! Not spotted by Cyril underneath those Metafacts there. Finds a big connection. But Clem was beaten back here. Lurker range is complete. Brendan, no! Karen, move! Move! Oh my god, how many times? Oh no. God, that split was so fast. Cyril, diffusing those mines. You have less... Uh, it, it's about 1.2 seconds to lock on and then that split second to fire and that's the time you have to keep it from killing 40 or so zerglings this is a widow mine drop indeed it is with drilling claws so clem tooling up for this oh no the queen were kind of physically in the way so for once it works out the queens actually prevented him from dropping because you can't drop directly on top of units and if there are enough of them it'll deny it Trying to get the hatch, but it may cost him a whole bunch of it. Clem, starting to get uh, shut down on multiple fronts here. A whole lot of medevacs, but not a lot to show for it. He's adding on those obligatory command centers. Now, I say Clem's not getting a lot done. He's, he's getting shut down. He's getting slapped back, which is the first time I said, but still. And Ricky, still getting work done. Finally, sacrificed for the greater good. <laughs> but, 
Cyril has not done. Oh my god, here we go. Lurker drops. Straight out of the Brood War. So, Cyril has not really done any damage to Clem. And that's the difficult part here. Is this stage. Oh my. The Widow Mine field just obliterating most of the Zerglings and Banelings. Meanwhile, Clem comes up into the third. The Lurkers are in transit right now. They're on an international flight. They don't have any Wi-Fi. They can't come back and they can't help out. The Lurkers into the main gonna make things quite complicated here as Clem forced to pick up. He loses a few units. He's dealing with the Lurkers in the main. Ten more. Wow, he lost so many overlords. Wait, so lost so many overlords. He's heavily supply blocked. So he can't really do much to compound this position. He can't even remax out because he has to wait for the overlord. So Clem still finding some opportunity. He's going to clean up the lurkers. It wasn't nearly enough to, to slice through the main. Sarah loses all those lurkers, but that does drag many of the units back into the main base and open up the third where 24 SCVs between it and the main will be slaughtered by the Zerg. Still one lurker. Ground carapace level three. These two so evenly matched right now. Widow Mines, though, recharging. Still, oh, that's a burrowed infester out there. A lot of burrowed things making it difficult. There's one more. Oh, no, 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 no. He will eventually clean up the mines, but they do take more than their pound of flesh. Plus three melee attack. I'm, I'm struggling. I'll be honest, guys. I'm very much struggling to keep up with this game. These two. I, I, I'd like to think I'm pretty good about um, picking out the most important parts and, and talking about them, or at least the most amusing ones, but there's just so much going on. Throws a beautiful fungal. Oh, parasitic bomb as well. A bunch of ghosts. Clem, some valuable units being slaughtered here as the Zerg overrun them. A great fungal. And now Clem's going to have to check around every corner and scan every open field because there might be burrowed infestors hiding under his bed. Three more infestors on the way. Scans for another base. Clem's at 160 supply. Cyril at 150. Neither player that much close. This is shaping up to be one of the best games I've ever seen. Burrowed Banes. Not nearly as good as their, their uh, mechanical counterparts. But could still make the difference both sides kind of go back rebuild we're seeing the unit compositions progress towards that that end game liberator ghost widow mind sort of setup oh parasitic bomb the marines show up just the two marines two brothers against the vipers their friend slaughtered in the medevac I'm using the word slaughtered a lot. It's it's pretty accurate, though, with how many of this is going now. We're going to try to find create more creative terms. Annihilated. Obliterated. Decimated. Destroyed. Yeah, I really thought I had, like, four or five more. We'll work on it. I'm, I'm keeping those in the back pocket. The Liberators will make life difficult for Cyril. Already are, actually. Especially with advanced ballistics. May actually require a spire in order to deal with it. I'm not sure if there are any uh, of the untouchable locations where you can just jam them behind a mineral line and not even hydras. Usually ravagers can deal with them, but Cyril doesn't even have a roach one, so a spire may very well be in our future. Though for now, oh, I guess you could use vipers for abduct as going for corruptors just for liberators is not usually ideal. But we've had our moment of respite. We've had, and by, by moment of respite, I mean they've only been sending a handful of units out to murder each other. A lurker here, a liberator there, a few zerglings there, maybe a drop. But no massive clashes between the two main armies for a little while now. Nidus Network, Cyril, tallying his options. Another attempt. Oh, main army. In the middle of the map. EMPs land on the Vipers, but not before they're able to get... Well, actually almost nothing. No parasitic bomb. Fungal's attempted. Takes out one of the infestors, tries to target another. Doesn't want to commit the units. 
Sensor towers are covering the entirety of Clem's side of the map, I guess except for the airspace, which might become the most relevant as now the Nidus network is done. And Cyril's gonna slam it down into the main. And there are no reinforcements really coming out of the barracks as Clem hasn't lost particularly many units. And that burrowed Bane Bomb, he pops it and uh, I assume it did some damage, but and demonstrating the reason why Burled Bane Bombs are not the be-all, end-all. It takes about five Banelings to kill a ghost, so... Uh, it can interrupt the snipes, I guess. Meanwhile, Widowmine slams into just a couple Zerglings. Uh, Liberators are escaping back into the Nidus. A few moving off to the flanks. All the Liberators are headed back, and that's the real win here. Is not that, Oh my god, the choke point is asphyxiating. He's, he's sieging up. But that's so many of the Liberators committed into the main. Clem just the select all Liberator key or something. He sends everything back. And that's a surprising amount of Liberators to commit to essentially no units in his main. Cyril's going to be very aware of that. Uses it to just smash another base. Clem's going to be completely shut down to the north. All of the Liberators headed back. That's a, a positioning mistake out of Clem. And Cyril... It, he didn't... That's the level we're playing at. It's not even that he, he lost units. They were just out of position. As there are only so many pieces you can move around the board right now. Oh. The Nidus comes back into the main after the Liberators leave. And Zerglings are spewing out of it one by one. A few lurkers come through the tail end. The Liberators are headed back. Clem feels like he's lost a lot of momentum here. As even though Cyril's not doing much damage with the Nidus. He continually drags... Well, there's quite a Venn diagram of freedom up there in the north. It's like a dozen Liberators. There are 15 Liberators on the field, but a few of them getting pulled out of the front lines. Only one Liberator remains sieged. The Hydras will pincushion it to death. Widowmind's going to blunt the force of the frontal attack. Plus three missile attacks. 70 more Zerglings on the way. Clem is... Sieging the beachhead. And we're 20 minutes in with no... Not much closer to a conclusion. I could not tell you who's ahead right now. Cyril was on the back foot for a while. But he stepped forward. And up a few notches. As... As Clem continues... Going back to deal... With the Nidus, with the counterattacks. The thing is, his army is almost as good as, it, as an army is ever going to get. Especially against the ground force that Cyril has. If there were things like Broodlords or a bunch more Lurkers, in fact, there's no Lurkers on the field. Well, maybe you'd want uh, some Thors, some some Siege Tanks, but against just the Hydraling Bane, the Ghost, the Mind, the Liberators, it doesn't get too much better. Throws out some EMPs. I'm not sure if there was anything underneath. A few Zerglings into the third. Right now, it's truly a chess game as the pieces are on the field and they can't go above 200 supply. Widow Mines taking out a bunch of Ling Bane to the start. Fungal from the back! Huge, huge fungal! Absolutely massive! As it, it delays the ghosts and keeps them from sniping, but that choke point was very difficult for the Ling Bane to get up. Ricky is back. We've had this game has gone for so long. Ricky is gracing us with his present. Ricky the second. Um uh this uh, no, this is Billy Bob. Okay, Billy Bob the Swarm Host, his, his son, or at least they, they claim it's his son. We're not sure, actually, but the Swarm Host is a little confusing how that whole thing works. But, so a second Swarm Host has accidentally graced us with its presence, and that's how you know this game is stressful for both sides. Especially for Cyril, who has continued to drag Clem out of position. But Clem's army is incredibly hard to beat. And he's just not committing enough of it for Cyril to get a decisive win in any of these fights. Killing the Liberators with Hydras is uh, a difficult proposition at best. The, the Hydras... Wait, are there even any Hydras left? The, the, they're all abducted out of the fray. But they will siege up again as there weren't enough Hydras to take them out. How many Hydras on the field? A dozen. There is no ship weapons upgrades, but there's plus two mech armor, which makes it that much more difficult. The swarm host is spotted and, and sniped. Cyril is now supply blocked yet again. He's lost so many overlords in this fight. 
Clem is closing in. He's got the army, but the Banelings crash into a big clump of Marines. Some of the ghosts are going to be taken out as well. Cyril, though, he's on the ropes right now. He doesn't have money. He doesn't have that much income either. As Clem, oh my, he's taken out bases. The mules have dropped, and he's held on to his key mining locations for the most part. Overall, Cyril's lost 13,000 more minerals. It's such a credit to Cyril that it hasn't felt like he's been trading that poorly. Or uh, a discredit to me, but I choose the first one. These last fights, though, have, have clearly shown the strength of this Terran army. Perfectly tailored for dealing with the mass unit composition uh, that Cyril has. The Liberators pick away at anything out of position and force a direct response, so that way Cyril can't use his highest damage units and his most effective spellcasters against the bio army. You can't, well, Verker's gonna take out a base to the north. You can't use your, your parasitic bombs, binding cloud, when you have to abduct the liberators in every fight. And the Hydras are not providing that backline DPS because they have to pick off the liberators. So it's just a, a, a technical composition that's very difficult for Zerg to deal with cost-effectively. The Liberator's closing in on both sides. Cyril has one more Infester with an incredible, it, immaculate fungal in the Parasitic Bomb. Unfortunately, the Viper's just a little bit on the slow. Wait, then! But wait, there's more! And Cyril, he's never out. He may be down, but he's never out. Though I fear that at this time, that's only going to delay the inevitable, as over the last five or so minutes, Clem has become more and more cost-effective, which has translated into him continually pushing. And now Clem! Clem. We'll take it. Oh my. Cyril. I, I said he's on the ropes. Uh, Clem is showing why this is his tournament. That was some of the best Terran I have ever seen. It, not, no part of it was particularly flashy. There weren't ridiculous marine splits or crazy micro or some sort of um, sharp timing that, that Cell didn't expect. That was just, it was flexible. He, he gave up bases that he, he couldn't hold on to, but he always came back and he, he took them again. And he did it in a way that Cell just couldn't compete with. Clem right now, looking like the very marginally, but outright better player. Cyril just not finding an answer with two different units coming. Okay, we're going into game three. <sighs> Clem, 3 0, Cyril. It's more likely than you'd think. Oh my. He's playing so well. I've this is literally the best Terran I've ever seen. I'm not exaggerating here. I haven't seen Maru versus Cyril in a while. But and specifically this matchup. And there's no better time, right? I don't know. There's nothing specific to point. I think one thing I want to talk about is the Liberators. I've never seen someone build quite that many Liberators as part of just a generic army composition, and he wasn't using them for any specific purpose. They're just always as support for the army. Uh, it honestly reminds me a lot of Bion, who will just take whatever units he has and make them work in whatever location. There were four or five Liberators here, there. Uh, there are a few points where he sent it back to the main where, where Sarah was able to draw the attention. But at no point, I wonder, if you told Sarah that unit composition at the start, does he still... I think Hydraling Bane really is the best way to deal with it because you can't really go for Corruptors or anything. That's not, that's not it. Well... Here we go. Climb up 
3CC. And that was two very different games, but with similar outcomes, with Clem grinding down Cyril. I'm thinking. Doing a lot of thinking. I'm really thinking about, like, what... What went wrong? Well, what really, I think, defined the game is how little Sarah was able to do to Clem. Clem was constantly poking and prodding. In in the most effective games for Zerg, it's those counterattacks that there was a Nidus in the main, but he lost lurkers every time he did that. And up to 200 supply, it was pretty much exclusively Clem attacking the other side of the map. Banshee Hellion. Back to the classics. The oldest build in the Terran vs. Zerg book. No cloak on the Banshees either. Third CC is done. Cyril going for his bread and butter. I don't, like, so. When faced with a 2-0 against Clem, he doesn't try some crazy cheese. He's not rushing a lair. He doesn't have a bunch of roaches. He is playing, he's, he's going to an even somehow more standard composition, which is a bunch of queens, and I assume we're going to rush Baneling Speed. Baneling Speed, the most effective way to deal with most early bioaggression, as without it, the Banelings just become target practice, especially off of creep. That Baneling provide Baneling speed providing plus five HP as well to the Banes, which is a very important part uh, when you add it up. Cyril gets a Zergling in towards the natural, sees nothing particularly on towards, and he also saw the third base has landed. Nothing to do about it right now. Stim on the way? It's just a full-on macro game. We're five and a half minutes in. Two Zerglings have died. An Overlord. They're both posturing for now, but we're going to see it again. And they're going to be battling it out in the mid game. And, uh, oh my god. Oh my god. You can't, don't just let him in. Oh my god. This is How does this happen? So you have like a free pass. He only gets one pass. Oh my god. That's so many Hellions. Uh, they're gonna be badly on the mid game he said, but the queen, the queen on the ramp! Does he have a grenade? The grenade can bounce the queen out of position. And that lets the Hellions in, but was it a trap all along? Oh my god! So many Hellions! He tried so hard, he got so far, but in the end, he even transfuses a drone. He didn't lose a drone! How many Hellions was that? A dozen Hellions and a Reaper! And he didn't kill a single drone! It does feel like an excessive amount. I don't know what he was looking to accomplish, but clearly more than that. Well, that was a near-perfect defense. The queen on the ramp, which she can just wide stance. It actually blocks Hellions from going up the ramp, even though it looks kind of weird. Um, because she's just barely thick enough for that. But the Reaper grenade bounces out of the way, but so already has the Zerglings ready. And gets away, including that drone transfuse. I d I'm not going to exaggerate when I say this. That was perfect defense. Cyril with essentially the best you could ever do with the units he had on the field. He's now at 80 drones at seven minutes. One, one upgrades a little bit quicker here for Clem, but not so much so Cyril isn't competitive. He's got as many drones as he's gonna need for quite a while. It doesn't get better than this for, for Cyril. He's got four bases, 82 drones, Hydralis Den. This is the most you could ever ask for, and probably a little bit on top. As, because Clem went for all those Hellions, 
be delayed any sort of follow-up bio push as well. That means it's going to be a little bit easier to, to get your creep spread out and to set up counterattacks before the bio army is closing and knocking on your front door. But Clem is not hesitating with that. He's already got that siege tank in a pretty... I've never seen quite that location used as a staging area. But clearly an annoying position to dislodge. We got some banelings up to the north side. Banshee covering the flank. Smartly done. Keeping it alive to do so. It already... By the way, the Banshee did a, about half the HP of the fourth base. So that could become relevant as time goes on. Whole lot of Banelings. Double drop heading out. Serral, big counterattack. Yeah, before the fourth base even lands, the Zerglings are all over it. No, oh, what am I watching? Okay. It almost looked like the Links of Bane were ignoring the Marines, but the Bane Links don't ignore anything nearby when they explode. The Zerglings just kind of dismantling this attack. Cyril casually turning a counterattack into a beautiful flank. And Clem is, is wiped off the field and again has more medevacs than units underneath. A recurring theme with this series. Cyril getting 2-2. Two, two. Clem about 30 seconds ahead on his. Widow Mines working their way forward. Drilling Claws is done. The Widow Mines haven't really... They haven't been a defining... The only time the Widow Mines have been a defining characteristic of this series was that game one where they killed so many medevacs. Ooh. Clem lodging himself into a nice position to take out the sixth base. Wait, one, two, fifth base. Six o'clock base, that's what I meant. I was wondering why my math was so bad. It's because we were talking about directions. Medevacs pick up, boost right on back. So only now going for the hive as he stayed on this mid-game army composition for quite a bit. Another army to the north side of the creep is already most of the way across the map. Serral, move command, closes and surrounds the tanks, and now obliterating the army. Plus two, plus two, about to finish for Clem, but it won't save these marines to the north. Another army just melted by the banelings. The rest will pick up and get out and try to pretend it never happened. Planetary Fortress. Is that a pre... No, he's got... Uh, Pulling SCVs for repair, but also potentially into the fray. Plus two, plus two, about to finish for Serral. He's nearly maxed out. There's no reason for Serral not to smash. A defining characteristic of this game. He's been able to get damage you done to Clem. He's been able to pull him back to his side of the map. He smashed these attacks. He's kept this creep spread up. This so far in the series is the best opportunity for Serral to get critical damage done before that endgame composition of the ghosts is on the field. A widow mine drop though, gonna try to blunt the force of this attack and minimize the economic disparity. He knows Serral's coming, but 11 drones go down. The banelings, the SCVs are just chilling. The stop position SCVs don't draw the anger of the banelings, but he smashes the planetary fortress and 14 SCVs alongside it. Clem, still at 185 supply. That's a whole lot of Terran. But there are no ghosts. There are no liberators. This is conventional marine marauder mine medevac. The M&M and M&M. &M &M. We'll see. Clem, I think, will have one shot. One opportunity. Will he capture it? Or will he step over Baneling Mines at the wrong time? Serral, blast him! Hits him with the mines. The, the classic... Uh... Oh! Ah! <sighs> Cyril, Cyril selected it. He knows. The timing is great. But unfortunately, uh, he just goes for it. And the scan was there anyways. <sighs> okay. 90, 90 drones. Clem still has 100 army supply. He still has plenty of economy. Losing that base was tough, but not, not critical. As he can still support this 3-3 army composition. And very key, Cyril is just now starting a Lurker Den. I don't think that's a mistake. He wanted to use the Hydraling Bane to hit this timing, but eventually, if Clem is able to keep up that, that Bio Ball army supply, he's going to need something a little stronger to deal with it. He's getting Vipers, he's getting Adrenal Gland. The Lurkers are the ultimate choice against 
this more conventional army. Widow Mine connects each some of the banelings, targets down the hatchery that was bruised by the Banshee. He comes back like seven minutes later and finishes it off, and it healed like maybe 20%, but it takes a long while. So another hatch down, Clem, biting back, as the income has heavily swung towards Cyril for a while, but in uh, sniping off that base and establishing another one for himself, Clem is still in it. And it's hard to call someone out with uh, with 200 supply. Uh, Cyril, all Cyril has done is keep Clem busy. But he hasn't really done critical damage to the economy, and at no point has he threatened the critical mass of army supply. It is just so hard to pin down this army, because it's on both sides of the map. He, he has very dangerous mobile armies throughout. Now, if either side gets smashed, that flank will collapse, and units will stream through and smash the base. There's so many medevacs, though. As long as the banelings are diffused and their damage mitigated, well, then the army will stay intact. But Cyril's still at 200 supply. Now we got the ghosts and the liberators on the way, but Cyril not going to sit back. He'll strike. Well, the zerglings are hot. Oh, parasitic bombs across the medevacs. Terrible, terrible damage being done to those medevacs. He didn't quarantine them quickly enough. There was so much going on. And the parasitic bombs will soften up many of the medevacs. And the base will be taken out. Another hatchery sniped off. The Banshee's still here. 18 kills. Clem. Making sure to get maximum value out of the units he can. There were some more Baneling bombs set up throughout the map. Uh, he's put them on all the ramps. It's obvious, but if he can force a scan out of Clem at all times, that's something that's that's kind of an indirect reduction to the economy with less mules there. Even one Widowmon sniped off. Well, Widowmon's on the back. Cyril's not going to engage. Lurker's on the way. Adaptive talent. Plus two ranged attack. For Cyril here. Bashing through the mines. Dragging the rest into the Terran arm. And Cyril is, is looking for the fourth base. Arguable fourth base yet again. Main links rolling in. Blasting into the planetary. Clem coming in from the flank though. Cyril on the run. Another attack. Does he have enough Banelings? Great target fire, by the way. Oh my god, he target fired the Banelings with the planetary, and the planetary will live because of it. 22 kills. Another parasitic bomb. It, uh, the medevac splits off and dies, so it doesn't threaten. Well, it's still doing damage out there. Viper still have a lot of energy. The ghosts are on the front. Widowbond slams into the Banelings, though, which will uh, blunt the force of this attack. Clem. It feels like he's on the road. He's still got a, a nice amount of SCVs, but he's running out of mining locations. And Cyril is just able to throw these attacks back so quickly. There's enough Lings, Hydras, and Banelings. Clem is struggling to compete economically. As Cyril, one, two, three, four, five, six bases now. 87 drones. Plus three melee attack is done. These are fully operational adrenalines. They have all of their upgrades. Clem never got plus three infantry armor. I don't know if that was a mistake or if he was just that broke at the time. Which is arguably a more macro-oriented mistake, but I digress. Well, so has kept the pressure on. A marked difference from the previous games. Widow Mines connecting with Clem's army as well. Some of the medevacs are wandering in. Banelings chased down. Still some on the ramp. Cyril continually setting them up. And here come the lurkers. How many ghosts on the field? Six of them. Not an overwhelming number. Widow Mines will burrow. There is still an overseer nearby. Banelings rolling in. FTVs on the run. Planetary down. Ghosts may be enough, but the, the lurker spines are eviscerating swaths of marines alongside the ghosts. And while Cyril may be beaten back on the left, 
He already killed the base. He knocked out a lot of supply. He's immediately replaced his own. Hydras, Lings, Bane's on the way yet again. We don't mind Burrows. We'll be taken out before it can be drawn into the Terran army, but still doing such a good job of dragging it into the Metavax. The Widow Mines are, are arguably better for Cyril this game yet again. There's enough energy for Parasitic Bomb. Another base is in flight. And so are the Metavax. Parasitic Bomb. Metavax with Marines and Ghosts inside. Just melting in the skies and plummeting to the ground with their entire payload. A burning command center. Can't even land on the Liberator. Uh, not the Liberator. On the Zergling here. Which is really, I think, uh, a microcosm of this game. Cyril has grabbed back momentum and right now he's in pole position to at least put himself on the board oh what a series so Cyril has not been neither player this is the best Starcraft 2 I've ever seen this time around Cyril just overwhelming glam beautiful splits He's made no major mistakes. Maybe the Hellions earlier, but Cyril had a perfect defense. G. G. Cyril. Hell, it's about time. Cyril's on the board. A incredible game from the finisher. Clem gambled a little on those Hellions, but God, they're so good. Anybody's series. Clem's still playing incredibly well. It's just a, a little shift in momentum is all Cyril needed. <sighs> okay, I feel like we're gonna go take like a one week long break after that. No, we're not done. We're just getting started. Game four. Babylon. Cyril is on the board. Clem? I, I'm surprised we don't see SCV is headed out on the map at this point. But I think Clem realizes he can hang with Cyril in the longer games. He clearly has already. So why not continue? And even in that last game, the Hellions... That was that was as close to a cheese as, as I think we're gonna get. As trying to dive in with those Hellions while uh Trying to dive in this with those Hellions was quite a gamble. If those were alongside a bio army, they could have been a huge help in some of those early attacks. But if of course, you know what else is a huge help is killing twenty-five drones. Killing zero is not as good. Um, that's my professional analysis. That's what you like and subscribe for. So, uh, zero drones, less than 25, not as good. Write that down. The numbers don't lie, and they spell disaster for you. Another thing I'm noting from, from Clem is how ready he is to, to play for the next phase of the game. It feels like, especially in Terran versus Protoss, to an extent, Clem is, is very, he's, he's, he feels like he's on a timer. Like he needs to end the game now uh, because his opponent's army or army composition is going to be too much um, as time goes on. But, oh, did Sarah go for an earlier pool? I don't think it was a pool first. I think he just got a pool before building some extra drones here because those Zerglings are out just a... a um, I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna say the first thing that came to mind. And I think if I had just said it, instead of prefaced it with this weird, like, bit, uh, of introduction, it would have been fine and nobody would have noticed. But, I, I felt it would be funnier if I did all this. So, with all that said, the Zerglings came out a wee bit quicker than you'd expect. Uh, and now, it becomes... It, yeah, he's got eight legs back here. Not even a Zerg rush, just a Zerg pressure here. He's not going to kill the command center, but he gets in. Before there's any other units, there's non Hellions. He's just building Marines. SCVs are fighting. This is a crazy timing. So did delay a lot of his drones and his third hatchery for this. Was it worth it? 
Okay, uh, let me let me phrase that in another way. But at what cost? <sighs> wow. Just I don't know. I don't know what he was trying to accomplish there. Cuz he did get it and he did delay. I guess if there were Hellions, he would have had a bit more time, but I, I think it was unlikely he was ever going to uh, delay the command center more than the building. Like he wasn't going to cancel it, so interesting. But I, it is going to get Clem thinking. What is he going to do next? Is there some sort of weird roach timing coming up after it? Clem is opting for the 3 2 one, one. The uh, three command centers, two barracks, one factory, one starport, medevac time. Uh, the economic progression of the 211 popularized by Beyond, now half a decade ago. <laughs> All right, so uh, we have a little bit of downtime here, which is a perfect opportunity to shout out to my dedicated viewers who were over an hour into this series, which, you know, that's a long time getting up maybe get up stretch a little bit and also realize that both these players have been alive less than half the okay so starcraft 2 has been out and released into the wild for more than half of these players lives Cyril 25 i believe uh clem 21 now yes you might be like i remember when they yes that's how that's how age works grandpa um, that's how, that's how it works. Actually, we're gonna, we're gonna do some fact-checking. Cyril. Yep, Cyril's 25. We share a birthday, I should know. Clem is 21. Kids these days. So, and StarCraft 2, 13 years old. Uh, in just a couple months. And we're still here, so I'm glad you still enjoy and this is, this is so far the best StarCraft II I've ever seen. So, this is how far we've gotten. Queen's getting hunted down. Medivac time with the transfuse. Keep things in tech. Guns down one. Target fire still good. Gotta pick up and get out. So slick. And then just stands the, nope. Just, just trying to bait the queens. Just stays barely out of range. Wants to get to the edge of the creep. An opportunity trade with a few more Zerglings. Dropping out. Baneling speed on the way. But this time, Cyril opted for the much quicker upgrades. He's actually going to have 1-1 one, one, almost a minute quicker. Eh, actually, a little over a minute quicker than Clem. Oh, targeting down more queens. He's on a couple of... A uh, bit of regicide going on, but... The upgrades on the Ling Bane are such a big deal. Especially those Bane lanes. Being able to close the distance on the Marines. Uh, and, and Clem without the plus one attack. Like, Marines simply fire so fast that those upgrades kick in uh, so much. The ability to trade with Zerglings when you have an upgrade advantage. If, if the Terrans have especially a 1-1 one, one upgrade advantage, you essentially require ban. You simply can't do damage with Zerglings anymore if they have Menavacs. It just doesn't work. <laughs> it's 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 like a, they have plot armor, and I'm not talking about like like tasteless, but instead, um, just the sheer sustainability with those Menavacs. The, the little damage that the Zerglings can do, especially the positions that players like Clem jam themselves into. But that advantage is not going to be there as Cyril has one one done. He's setting up for a massive flank and or counterattack because uh, a lot of utility. And the Zerglings stream into the third, and this is going to be a very dicey situation for Clem. The Zerglings can beat these Marines. They can beat the SCVs, of course. He's going to be he's going to be forced to pick up, and the SCVs are abandoned. He's trying to evacuate. Okay, this is Clem's Dunkirk, which I guess is just Dunkirk. Um, but a dozen SCVs go down. Plus two, plus two for Cyril. Clem doesn't even have an armory done. 
He's just, and Sarah has kicked this Zerg revolution into overdrive. Oh, wow, though. No matter what the upgrades are, that many Marines is going to pose an existential threat to the Zerglings. He kills a few dozen more, making up somewhat for the losses suffered at home. Still, 60 SCVs and counting, plus two starts, but there is a window here where Clem has equal upgrades to the ground army. He has an opportunity to potentially break through or at least take a very cost-effective fight. Will he capture it? Huge siege tank target fire there takes out a group of mainlings. Cyril still about 20 seconds out to two. Clem has to expect that's going to be kicking in as soon as possible. He only has plus two infantry weapons on the way. Back at home, the Zerglings once again trying to take out a siege tank, but he's losing a lot of links. The thing is, Cyril can afford this. He's got five bases. He's got 78 drones. He's got the upgrades, which means if Clem steps on to creep, Cyril will rip his legs off if they don't uh, pop up into a medevac, of course. It's going to be hard to deal with it then, but any Marine left on the crew. Yep, there you go. Thank you. This is a mass Zergling build, by the way. He is only building Zerglings and Banelings. He has skipped the Hydra list at, and that has allowed him to go for an extra quick hive in the grand scheme of things. And uh, are we going to see ultras? Is it ultra tarp? Right, I'm getting ahead of myself. Sarah may very well kill Clem with just Zergling. So he's getting, let me in! Let me in! And he gets in! 2-2 two, two versus 1-1. One, one. No matter of X. A couple siege tanks doing almost as much damage to the Marines as they are to the Zerglings. But there are Zerglings everywhere. Cyril and Wow! Oh, and this was going to... He was definitely going to go ultras. Cyril ties it up. Uh-oh. <laughs> wow. Just true Zergling explosion. The ultimate macro Zerg demonstrated there. And that will bring us to match point. Cyril just, he's all warmed up now. An epic series thus far, but Clem clearly losing, well, not really losing a step. I feel like Cyril's gained one more accurately. So if Clem was a half step ahead before and Cyril gained a step, that means now Clem is a half step behind. And that's truly what it feels like. But we're going in to the final match Assuming it's not a draw, which I think is not out of the question with these two. Game five. Neo Humanity. Clem versus Cyril. The ESL Summer 2023 European Semifinals. Okay, okay. Wow. And it's another game where I don't really think Clem made any big mistakes. These are the the literal best here. It, Clem didn't make any real mistakes. It's just Cyril uh, strategically outplayed him. His, his mass zergling build stacked up with quick upgrades stacked up really well against the bio focus of Clem. Because Clem was trying to get those medevacs out on the field means he didn't get his upgrades quite as quickly. And because Cyril was able to hold on against the first bio push means he had this continued upgrade advantage that that he took that tiny advantage and wedged it in literally to the depots and, and between the command center and the minerals and, and leveraged a massive lead the upgrade advantage was the crowbar that he pried open the door and and that one is a pretty literal analogy because oh you saw how that game ended <laughs> got it Cyril's so confident in his upgrades, he will send 40 Zerglings into a single depot choke point and win. And I think that's the best demonstration of the upgrade advantage mattering that I could have come up with. Where literally players will right-click, move command, 
past ju or or a click and and try to have them jostle and reposition because every time you do that the zerglings will adjust slightly and if you do it just right the the zergling uh hurting then it will allow you to get a better surface area on those units of course when not applied by professionals it is much more likely to just get all your zerglings killed but i think Wait, literally, as just a callback. This is the most professional StarCraft 2, so. And here we go. No cheese, no nothing from anyone. The entire, the cheesiest build this whole series so far was Clem's two base Hellbat timing in game one. Serral, yeah, sure, he did like this kind of odd zergling timing that clearly helped out in the last game, or at least it ended up working out. Why is there a... How does this happen? How did he get his Zergling in? Now he doesn't have to send his Overlord in. These are the tiny things that compound into a lead for Sarah. I don't understand how the Zerg... Like, lower the D... Even if the Zergling ends up seeing everything, like, now now Sarah doesn't have to send an Ovi in, thus risking it, and then having to build another Ovi to replace it. I just don't know. Like, there's time. There's time to... Well, I think he was microing the Reaper, but still. And I said, no cheesy builds. Serral channeling his inner darkness. Game five. He whips out the Roach Horn. It hasn't been scouted by Clem. He doesn't have... What? Is the, Is he... Do oh my god. Is he doing a queen drop? Oh my god. I said, this is this is like a dark copyrighted bill. I, but against Terran, I, I almost can't believe it. I actually, I, I did not expect this at all out of Sale. Yeah, Roach is okay, but this is crazy. He's doing a queen drop build in game five against Terran. I, it is 3cc. He got a perfect scout. The roaches are coming across. All right. It's a German taxi build. Where are the, where's the queen drop? He's at... He, no, he's doing... He's dropping everything. Oh, my God. I don't... Cyril. Cyril. I... I don't know. I don't even know. I've never seen this. This is crazy. I don't... And, and it, it takes a lot for me to say I've never seen, but this isn't even... This is completely... He's got the Overlord drop. He could use them potentially. He could drop creep and he may go for... Oh my god, inspired by dark. Yeah, this is a dark... Now... Oh my god. Oh, he's doing... This is my favorite build. I just talked about this like yesterday. And, uh, and now Cyril's doing it. Oh my god. He can use the Hellion. Like, Clem is over here trying to figure out which Marine to roast to kill the proxy creep tumors. And now Cyril just macros it out. Oh my god. I... Oh. So, I want... I want you... Those of you to appreciate. Those of you who've, who've watched the cast thus far. I didn't clickbait this. Okay? This is gonna be a surprise. Because right now, this is gonna be like the best series I've ever seen. Or some s s silly clickbait like that. Even if it's true. Because it is. But you, you watch this far to this point, and this is the most exciting. I don't care about, I do care about how great these players have been. It's been the best StarCraft 2. They're playing at the best level. And then Cyril, is that misplaced? It looks misplaced. When Cyril does it, it's not misplaced. I'm pretty sure that's off. Such a weird spot for a hatcher. Anyways, but this is my favorite. This is my favorite tactic that is on the, um outer edge like it's technically a thing but it when when it comes to the venn diagram of things that are and are not it is that tiny overlap of like yes but also eh. and Cyril is doing it in the elimination match for uh the european regional championship and Clem truly thought this was going to be some sort of Roach Because it was a Roach all in. But a queen drop. The queens, they finally fly again.
This is the most excited I've been. Despite all these dramatic games. Oh my. I love it. I love it so much. I think he did want to do the all-in, but immediately saw that Clem was ready. So, just pulled back into... Now, he is building Roach Hydra. Well, mostly Roach is here, but... The Queen's still going... <laughs> you gonna nerf my creep? You gonna make it so Queens can't fly at Overlords anymore? All right, the Cabal will have a word with you. And now he's sending a Roach drop into the main? Oh my god. Here's the thing. This army composition gets beaten by a straight-up 200 supply terror. Uh, so I don't think Sarah's gonna let that particular situation happen. The roach drop it. What the? Like, Clem's gotta be wondering exactly what the hell. <laughs> What's our creep to her in the nest? <laughs> Burrowing roaches. Is this that, that, that beating grandmasters is stupid stuff? Well, he's not winning yet, and right now it's still very much in doubt. This has clearly had an effect on Clem, though. Clem is sitting back. There's creep everywhere. Cyril has gone from getting essential outplayed, beaten down. Uh, and, and ground to pieces by Clem to building creep tumors in his natural and burrowing roaches in his main. But, I, I repeat myself, but the Terran army is better in a heads-up fight. Oh my... Are you kidding me right now? Well, he didn't transfuse. He's focused more on... Oh my god, his Cyril is everywhere. He's in the third. He's in the main. There's a burrowed roach in here. Clem can't focus on the fight, and by the time he does... Oh, my. If I didn't know better, I'd say Cyril was just throwing for dramatic effect in those first two games. Because the lurkers are already here. And while Clem's clearly doing okay in this fight, he's not doing okay anywhere else, as evidenced by the fact GG! Cyril wins... Three to two. He takes three in a row. You can't, like, that was too well scripted, guys. Come on. Come on. I, let Clem shows some of the best solid macro Terran for two games. Cyril barely edges out game three. And then games four and five are clear demonstrations of Cyril unchained. The finisher comes in from the top rope with three queens and an overlord <laughs> which is uh, <laughs> well I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did well not as much I hope I enjoyed it slightly more than you because I'm selfish and narcissistic but hopefully to that end you like and subscribe <laughs> and agree on, on the level of entertainment we saw here today. Sarah takes it three to two. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I'll be back next time. If we're able to get what? 1,030. Thank you, Jimmy. Mm -mm. Uh, good luck. Have fun. I'll see you next time. I hope I made your day a little bit better. Thank you for watching. Stay chill.